Hello and welcome to Grocket TV. This is GMAT Lesson 4. Today we're going to cover some more quantitative uh, concepts and also review a little bit of what we did last week. If everyone can see and hear us all right, just let us know in the chat, um, in the chat field and uh, we'll get started in about 10 or 20 seconds here. If you have any questions about the course, you can always email us at support at grocket.com. You can also tweet me at Farbood and I'll give you that in a moment here as well. Looks like we're doing good. Technical check is done. Let's get class started. Um, so we're first going to do a little bit of a review of reading comprehension. Uh, as soon as I get this slide working. We're going to work this passage here in just a moment to, all together. There we go. So my name again is Farbud Nivi. If you want to follow me on Twitter or ask me questions, it's probably the quickest way to get a hold of me is to just shoot a tweet to at Farbud. Uh, but before we get into uh, today's math, we're going to review our reading comp. Last week we worked on uh, working the passage as well as uh, handling main idea or primary purpose questions. So we're going to uh, employ this uh, technique today and we're going to do it just a little bit differently. If we remember, um, we, we see this passage, we see a question, it's a primary purpose question. Our technique last week was to read the first and last sentence of each paragraph. We're going to try that again and see if that'll help us just answer this question. So uh, what I'd like everyone to do is to sort of read the paragraph and then we're going to summarize the first paragraph and do that for each paragraph as we go. So I'll give you enough time to just read the first paragraph. Go ahead. Rather the first sentence and, and last sentence of the paragraph. So. I just did it and I noticed that the first sentence was really short. Well, I know our rule of thumb is to just read the first and last sentence of the paragraph, but when the first sentence is that short, I'll usually read another sentence as well. I'm trying to get two or three lines in. So let's read the first sentence. A report on the orangutans of Borneo, Indonesia was recently completed. It reveals that their population is drastically declining. The last sentence of this paragraph says, in order to prevent the extinction, there must be enough habitat um, in their native areas. So on my GMAT, I'm sort of keeping track of this like this. I'm writing a little P1 for paragraph one, uh, and I'm noticing that it says report on orangutans. Report on orangutans. Um, says that their uh, population is declining. And that's all I need. I just need to summarize it really quickly. In paragraph two, go ahead and do the same thing first and last sentence. So I see a lot of mention of habitat and that the habitat loss is important and that they need habitat in, uh, as part of the issue of orangutans uh, population decreasing. So same technique. Again, this is fast. It gets us what we need to answer the question. Paragraph three. If we notice in paragraph three, the author takes a bit of a turn and they start talking about, they start talking about the results of the report and they start talking about how, what should happen. And that's pretty specific. A lot of times um, the should issue is a, a no-no on the GMAT, but here they're talking about how environmentalists and biologists feel is an effort worth trying. Um, but they do feel like there is no, no clear way to halt the progress. So if I'm keeping track of that here, I can say, uh, so tough to stop, but should try. 
So if I'm employing this technique on my GMAT, I can read all of this and summarize all of this in really one to two minutes. And that's important because I'm trying to do the, uh, just the amount of work I need to to answer the questions correctly. And if we look at the answer choices, let's go through them. Explore a taboo topic. We didn't mention that anywhere here. Let's eliminate A. Refute an established view. I didn't notice anything that we talked about refuting or established views that were mentioned. Examine scientific details from a new report. Well, we wrote the word report here, and I can see the word re report here as well. So let's hold on to that. Describe disparate ideologies. I don't really recall two different things being uh, compared. Uh, we probably would have noted them. Let's get rid of that and examine a new system. Not sure what system they would be referring to, so I'm feeling pretty confident that the answer is C. Let's try it out, and we're correct. Great, so our strategy works there uh, on primary purpose questions, and part of how we're working the passage, reading the first and last sentences of it. If the first sentence is too short, read a little bit more, and break down the passage on your scratch pad Similarly to this, you can see that it's not beautiful, it's not verbose, there's one or two words for each paragraph, it keeps me focused on the core of what's going on here. Great, so let's jump into the rest of our lesson today. We're going to do a bit of review and additional stuff on percents, we're going to learn about ratios, we're going to do some equations and basic algebra stuff, and we're going to work a lot of questions together. So taking a look at this passage here, ratios and proportions, we're going to work some questions on ratios and proportions and there are a few ways we can represent ratios and proportions on the GMAT. So the ratio 4 fifths can be written this way. Oops and can be written this way. And we know that the GMAT is a test of our information management skills, so that's something that the GMAT is likely to do, which is to play with the different ways that the test can represent information to you. So a ratio could be represented as a fraction, it could be written with the uh, uh, colon there, uh, and it could be written with the word two. So simply put, ratios are comparing two numbers, uh, and they represent a constant relative relationship between two values. So what we want to do for ratio and proportion questions is again to organize ourselves as an information management challenge and we can see that this question does that here. So three sisters split the cost of a plane ticket if the flight costs 360 and Mary pays twice as much as both Sarah and Pauline how much did Pauline pay? So the question is asking us about how much Pauline paid. Let's go back and re-represent the information um, in a way other than English and do it as an information management challenge. So we can make what we call a ratio box where we have the ratio in one row, we have the absolute numbers in another row, and we have for each column the different uh, variables that we're dealing with here. So um, in this situation, three sisters, Mary, Sarah, and Pauline, split the cost of the plane ticket. If the flight cost 360, so if we put this information into our box, we get it's the actual value, so we're going to put it in the absolute row. This is the actual value. And Mary pays twice as much as both Sarah and Pauline. So if we say Sarah spent X and Pauline spent X, Sarah spent twice that amount. Great, so Mary, the ratios are Mary has 2x, Sarah has x, Pauline has x, and the total is 4x equals $360. So why is this 4x? Well, we say this is the total amount, 2x plus x plus x equals 4x. So we now have a simple equation for ourselves, 4x equals 360. And to find the value of x, we just divide by 4, and everyone tell me in the chat box what 360 divided by 4 is.
What do we get, Jake? I think it's 90. 90? There you go. All right, let's move on and take a look at more proportions and then we're gonna work some questions together on these as well. So a proportion is an equation that sets two ratios equal to each other. So GMAT likes ratio questions. Proportion questions are just ratio questions made potentially slightly more complicated, increasing the challenge in terms of managing the information. So that makes sense that the GMAT likes these sorts of questions. They relate to each other. One has more information and potentially more complicated than the simpler version of the concept that they wanted you to understand. So if Hal can answer four questions in 64 minutes, how many can he answer in 12? Let's set up a sim simple ratio. We have four questions. You can put little cues by them if you want in 64 minutes. Well, they want to know how many. So the how many here is represented by an X and the 12 is minutes just like the 64. So we've set up a simple equation here and if you notice the GMAT gave us English and we changed it into a form of information management for, into an information management format that is easier to work with than English is when you're doing math. So let's cross multiply. Remember like values must be either next to or over one another. So 64 times x, 4 times 12. We get 48 equals 64 x. We divide by 64 on both sides. We get 48 divided by 64 and x equals 3 fourths. So when the GMAT gives us a piece of English like this where they give us a ratio and then a proportion which we said a proportion remember is a equation that sets two ratios equal to each other that's what we have here we turn the English into math and we end up with a relatively straightforward algebraic solution uh, and just cross multiplying Great, so actually let's go ahead and take a look at an uh, example of a question here. 